When I actually bought the car, uh, I wanted it as my daily driver because I loved it. And believe it or not, at one point, it was almost concourse condition, one of the best examples on the road. And when you do actually brake at 150 miles an hour, you can feel the back wheels come off the floor. It is absolutely mental. I've had the car 14 years, but I think its drag life of the car has been about five years, with the last three years being the most effort and actually the best results coming from it. When the idea came around to use a Fiesta as a drag car, the initial reaction was that I'm a fool because there's no parts for it, but that really just spurred on the engineering side of things and made it more of a challenge really because no one's done it yet. I've had a few purists which had a crossword to say about cutting up the car, but at the end of the day, it's really fast and I don't care. Age nine, Phil fell in love with Fiestas. Now he's combined that passion with his flair for engineering to create a crazy fast dragster. He's kept as many of the original features as he can whilst making the car as light as possible. Phil calls the car Big Pig after a scene in the film Babe. So the main components of the Fiesta is still its original Fiesta shell. Uh, we've added a roll cage, better suspension, better engine, better gearbox. The most challenging aspect on the Fiesta was modifying the suspension. As it started life as a road car, the suspension was engineered for safety, safety in braking and safety in steering. I needed it to launch as hard as possible, and that meant engineering out all the anti-dive characteristics which make it a safe handling road car. The engine is a 2-litre ZTEC four-cylinder, and it's currently producing 820 horsepower. I've made my own custom external oil pump setup to allow for higher revs. These are 26 inch by 10 inch Mickey Thompson tyres. The rim started off as a 6 inch wide rim and they've been modified out to a 10 inch rim by having an extra section welded in, known as banded steels. There's not much left in there. Door frame's been cut out purely for weight saving and the glass has been replaced for a Lexan window and it's a bit flexible. My dashboard consists of three things, a shift light, a knock light and a calibration switch, which I can switch from burnout mode into race mode. So honestly, the fastest I've ever been in a car is the Fiesta, and that's 159.7. The doors bellow open from the wind, and it gets a little bit unstable. You just have to keep your foot in. It's pretty frightening. When the huge turbo actually comes on boost and it makes full power, you kind of become a passenger rather than a driver. So it's a case of just keeping your foot in and hoping for the best. My first emotion is just relief that I haven't died on that run. <laughs> <laughs> Phil's not going to allow a few nerves to stop him going faster. And because I'm really interested in the science of drag racing and trying to get the car as fast as possible, I wired in a G-force meter. When you finally pull the parachute, we've actually almost got to two Gs. So the thing with G-force is, it's like your body weight. So my whole body becomes 180 kilos being forced forward. The current world record for a front-wheel drive Ford is 8.87 seconds. With my little car doing 9.1, I'm pretty close, and I reckon with a few more mods, I can definitely beat that record. I'm now one of the fastest cars in the UK. Generally, people are a little bit worried when I turn up to races. 